doesn't make, I don't see the, there we go. All right. So, uh, so welcome everyone uh, to this candidate forum uh, for our uh, candidates for school board. Uh, we are excited to have all four candidates with us uh, this evening. Uh, we have four candidates who are running for, as you all probably know already, two open spots. Um, and these are three year terms each. Uh, so we are uh, excited to have them with us uh, to discuss uh, the issues that affect our district um, and to see uh, what each of them plans to bring to the table uh, to, uh, to address the issues in the district. So uh, my name, again, like I said, is Ron Watson, um, and I'll be with you here uh, this evening. And we want to just move as quickly as, we, as possible through things so we can make sure we get to uh, as many questions as possible. So what we'd like to do now without further ado is uh, talk to our candidates. So we just want some candidate info, uh, specifically who you are and why you're running. And we'll just uh, have just brief statements from each of our candidates. So uh, Greg, you're the first on my screen. So let me just come to you uh, uh, for that. Hey, good evening. Um, I am Greg Schneider. Um, and again, oh. I'm a candidate for the school board. Um, first, um, I'd like to thank the League of Women Voters, the NAACP, the Chamber, and the WHPCA uh, for holding this forum and for all their efforts to protect our voting rights. Um, I, I will bring my passion, experience, and leadership to the school board as we work together to build better schools for a better tomorrow. You know, after 40 years in education as a teacher, a program coordinator, a program manager, a transition specialist, and the supervisor of special education. In each position, I've strived to make sure my students receive quality education and that they learned what they need to be successful in contributing members of society um, and then ready to enter college or the workforce. Um, and I have provided the resources and staff development to my staff and coworkers and encourage them to strive to always be better tomorrow than we are today. You know, I've been observing and interacting with the school board for almost two years now, and I've decided now is the time to run. Um, while in my opinion, the board is in a better position now than a few years ago, um, there are still some areas that we need to improve on. Um, can working to enhance board transparency and ensure the open meeting laws are followed, maintaining consistency in school leadership and direction. Um, board meetings need to be efficient and effective um, and the board must always ask, is this the best interest of the students? You know, the school district of Beloit has many things going for it. Uh, the dedicated teachers and staff, uh, expansive course offerings and wide variety of extracurriculars and more. But there are areas that still need improvement and working together, the community, teachers, staff, administration and board, we can make Beloit one of the best districts in the state and make Beloit proud. Thank you. All right, thank you, Greg. Thank you very much. Um, I'm going to come next to uh, Sean. All right, good evening. Uh, as Greg has already thanked everyone, uh, also uh, to me, uh, to you, I give those greetings. Um, I'm running because as a parent, I simply have uh, two things that I wanna focus on. I'm gonna say vision and leadership. Uh, my prayer for the children of Beloit is the same that I pray for my own two children. And what I work towards is that like Jesus in Luke 2.52, that the children of Beloit increase in wisdom, stature, and favor. When I say wisdom, I mean not only the academic things that they learn in school, but through the activities, the cultural experiences, uh, the sports, the artistic, the academic, all those things accumulate to help them have wisdom. When I talk about stature, I mean their physical health their social, emotional health, um, and also their personal reputations. Uh, when we think about what happens in the school, the opportunity to socialize, that's where their character is being built. Uh, and so also when we talk about their physical safety, a return to in-person learning that is based on science, um, that takes into context um, our condition where we are at now. Many things have changed since the beginning of this. Uh, I myself was recently um, vaccinated, and I know that that is happening with many educators, and that totally changes the context of education. But for our children, uh, where those are not available yet, and the people that serve them, those are important things. And lastly, um, 
their favor, favor to develop hearts of service. Um, I think that what we have to be is aspirational in the things that we're doing in our school district. We have a great story to tell uh, in Beloit. Uh, and if we are not aspirational, we'll fall to um, the stereotypes uh, that uh, people will label a school district who has poverty uh, the way that we do our special education population and our diversity. These are our strong suits. Uh, when, we, when people say uh, we are Beloit proud, uh, what I think sometimes people miss are the things that around um, other parts of the state that people have looked at us and said, well, what's going on in Beloit? Good things can come out of Beloit and that's why I'm running to help that happen for our children. Thank you very much, Sean. Um, and now I wanna come over to Spencer, please. All right, so I just want to start off by saying uh, my name is Spencer Anderson, and I wanted to start by saying thank you again for everyone that uh, put together this forum tonight. Um, I really appreciate it. It gives us opportunity to address our voters and hopefully earn their votes on April 4th. To give you a little bit of background on me, um, I am a product of the Boyd School District. Um, once I graduated high school, I went off to the University of Dubuque and got my degree in flight operations. Once I, uh, once I completed that, I actually came back to Beloit and uh, as I was finishing up some of my other licensing for flying, um, I actually became a substitute teacher and also uh, then transitioned into the instructional technology coach at the high school. Um, so this gave me actually a really good perspective on the school district um, and since I was young, uh, or I'm still relatively young and just recently out of the high school, it gave me a very unique perspective um, as being a former student and then going back and actually being a teacher there. Um, but because of my experiences in the schools, um, this prompted me to run last year. And because I was uh, a one-year term, I wanted to seek re-election uh, this coming April, so that I can keep uh, working with the school district and also help bring more stability back to the district. Um, one of the examples is uh, bringing in our current superintendent, Dan Kieser. Um, with that being said, I hope that throughout tonight, you guys uh, see that hopefully I have earned your vote. So thanks again. All right, and thank you, Spencer. And last but not least, uh, Christine, we'll come over to you, please. Good evening, my name is Christine Raleigh. My husband, Daytoven, and I have four young children. I hold a bachelor's degree in communications from Waldorf University. In the past, I've worked with preschool children and in banking. In addition to caring for my children at home, I manage a small in-home clothing boutique. My husband is a fifth grade teacher at Rock County Christian School and works part-time at Welder Supply Company. We absolutely love this city and all it has to offer. The events of this past year prompted me to become more interested than ever in local government. Attending city, school board, and county meetings, I noticed not all voices of our community seem represented. It is very clear to me the importance and direct impact that local government has on our daily lives. My family lives on the west side of Beloit, which is typically underrepresented in our local positions. I believe every child should have the chance to succeed in life and regard it regardless of personal background. And that starts with access to a quality education. Many children pass through these schools with a high probability of never reaching a basic level of achievement. This is revealed through years of reports that reflect the sobering state of our schools. Even just skimming the surface of these statistics is heart-wrenching. I believe our district needs to prioritize student achievement, safety, and accountability. As a board member, I will listen, respectfully working together with those who think differently than I do. I appreciate that every individual brings something different to offer and a unique perspective. I want to serve and represent the voices of families in our community and help make education, a quality education, a reality for all in our district. All right, thank you very much, Christine. 
So without further ado, candidates, we will go to our first question. Um, and I just will remind you uh, that after I ask the question, you'll have uh, about two minutes. And I want our timekeeper to sort of uh, be fairly assiduous about that so we can make sure we move through uh, as many questions as possible. But you have uh, two minutes uh, to respond. All right, so first, our question is this. Do you recognize social promotion as an issue in our schools? If so, how would you gain a greater understanding of how and why this may occur? And what steps might you take to correct this complex problem? So uh, I'm just going to start off this evening. We'll go in backwards uh, direction here. Christine, throwing this to you first. Definitely. And could you please repeat the question one not time? Not a problem. So we're going to put the question in the chat. So I'll give you just a second and okay. I will repeat it as well. So um, it's a multi-part question. Do you recognize social promotion uh, as an issue in our schools? Um, if so, how would you gain a greater understanding of how and why this may occur? And what steps might you take to correct this complex problem? So this is an issue around social promotion. Well, I think we definitely need to focus on student achievement in our district. Uh, from, as of right now, our, our district rates, um, I think it's 417 out of 421 or 414 out of 421. And so clearly uh, this is something that needs to be addressed. Um, I believe that we need to, focus on also really questioning what have we been doing that isn't working and if social promotion has been a role in a way we've been doing things uh, perhaps we need to come back and uh, reevaluate if there is a better way to help equip our students um, and and help them to achieve better in our district okay all right, thank you. Uh, so uh, after that, we will come over to Greg. So Greg, uh, same question. The question is now in the chat. So, uh, but yeah, do you recognize social promotion as an issue in our schools? And um, if so, how would you gain a greater understanding of how and why this occurs? And then what steps might you take to correct this complex problem? Well, I think social promotion happens um, in, in all schools. Um, and I think it, it um, I know it's something that happens here, um, hopefully not as often, but the one way to find out how often it is happening is to continually talk to uh, teachers and administrators as to how students are moving. But if we use the test scores that we're getting as a basis for that, we're not seeing the achievement levels that should take place. Um, but, you know, it's uh, for us to get a handle on that would be again, talking with people, but then the steps to begin to correct that would be beginning to provide more support for students, especially in the elementary schools, so that they improve on their skills. Um, and so that they're beginning to reach those markers that they have um, during those tasks that, that, that take place. Um, and then we won't have to worry about social promotion because the students will have the skills that they need to continue to move forward. Um, and I think it's something that we would begin, you know, most strongly in the elementary schools. Um, and that's where we need to start catching students um, and providing the supports that they need early. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much, Greg. Uh, Sean, can I come over to you? Yes. Uh, first, with me as a candidate, uh, or a board member, I think what you'll notice is my laser precision. Our schools are set up so that grades four through 4K through three is the first level. Uh, and read, that's when reading uh, is, is, uh, should happen. So when we say social promotion, I mean, that question makes me wonder, are we promoting third graders who can't read to the intermediate school? Because intermediate school in Beloit is grades four through eight. And at levels four through eight, they're all in the same building. So where are we promoting them to? And then ninth grade through 12th grade is at the high school. And you can spend four years in the high school, but if you don't earn the credits, you're not gonna get out of there. 
So when the question comes to social promotion, it makes me wonder how that, you know, how the question was constructed. But to address those things, you need a data system and a data culture. And we also have to focus on continuous improvement and refining our instruction to what those results are. What parents want to know is, is my student at the level they should be? Are they above that level or are they below that level? And tell me what I need to do to improve them. As a professional educator, I should know these things. I have 22 years experience. But what I want to do is for the parents who don't have the technical expertise that I have to break it down for them so they're not getting snowed by different answers. And this is not the work of the board members to do. We have to set a vision and tell uh, the administrative staff what we'd like to see so we can serve the children of Beloit. And then it's up to us to hold them accountable, which is a place I think the board has failed in the past. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, Sean. Um, and finally, Spencer, let's come over to you. Same question. All right. So um, I do recognize this is an issue within our schools. Um, so the first thing that we have to try to actually kind of tackle this issue is to set up um, better intervention courses, um, allow the students to have access to that. So by setting up those intervention courses, we're hopefully catching them at a younger age um, and then uh, giving them plenty of opportunity to get caught back up to their actual uh, targeted group that they should be in. Um, so, because we don't, the main thing is, is we don't really, you don't wanna socially hurt them by holding them back. So as we move them up, it's just, we need to give them more time and opportunities to get them brought back up to where they should be, so. Okay, all right, thank you very much, Spencer. All right, candidates, now that you're nice and warmed up, we'll move over to um, our next question. Um, and that is uh, this, and uh, if uh, Madison, we can go ahead and drop this in the chat too. So uh, what steps should the school district of Beloit take to recruit and retain educators from underrepresented racial and ethnic groups, as well as male teachers. Why is it important to ensure diversity is always central to district policies for filling vacancies? Okay, and you can see that um, there in the chat. Uh, so what steps should the school district of Beloit uh, take to recruit and retain educators from underrepresented racial and ethnic groups as well as male teachers? And why is it important to ensure diversity is always central to district policies for filling vacancies? Um, and so I'm going to start this time uh, with Spencer. So Spencer, we'll go to you first. Go ahead. All right. Um, so for this, um, we actually recently, uh, actually as of Tuesday night, the Planning Budget Committee uh, approved to add Frontline as a tool to help for hiring. So we're adding this in conjunction with we can. So we're slowly starting to expand out to being able to get more people having a larger candidate pool. Um, I believe that they said there was about 9,000 people within Wisconsin that are currently looking for jobs on there. Then you're looking at about 55,000 people that are outside of Wisconsin that are willing to come uh, to Wisconsin for work. And then they also have a large, even larger pool for people that are just looking for work in general through uh, Frontline. So we're taking small steps to start to uh, increase that candidate pool. And uh, I know there's been talks about adding other uh, ways for people to apply to come to our district. Um, okay. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Uh, and the last thing for... Um, why this is important is because uh, you'll hear a lot of people say that your students should or your staff should mirror your students. Um, it gives those kids a better connection with those the staff members. So, okay, all right, thank you very much. Um, so this time, Sean, I'm going to come to you second here, please. So the first thing in answering this question, I want to make sure that our white teachers in our district feel valued and represented. I'm a graduate of Blit Memorial High School 1995. I went to schools on the west side. 
uh, Hackett um, and Cunningham. And I've had many educators in the school district of Beloit. I can call their names, but there are too many to list. But as an African-American male, as a black man growing up in Beloit, those kind-hearted souls who really believed in me made a difference. Additionally, growing up in Beloit, educators like Richard McGregory, Dr. Carlton Jenkins, uh, Dwayne Street, um, Mrs. Candace Link, uh, they make a difference. For me, it was Dr. Jenkins helped me get to Mississippi Valley State University to become a teacher. Uh, this district has a history of treating poorly the African-American people that have come here. That's why when we, I served on the ad hoc um, diversity committee for the district maybe about three or four years ago. I've been following the district over the last 10 years participating in board meetings. This is a, a, a cyclical subject, but even when we talk about the foundation of Beloit, uh, going all the way back to Fairbanks Morris, recruiting workers from Mississippi to come to Beloit and the hiring of J.D. Stevenson from Tuskegee Institute, we know the formula to get black educators to Beloit, recruit the historical black colleges and universities, which are things that have not been done consistently since Dr. Smith, um, since Dr. Rosa Smith or Dr. Ernest Blandon were here. This is a part of the retread that it doesn't take forever to learn how to do these things. There are some steps that have been taken, but that's a part of the snowing that I'm talking about. We have to be direct and do those things. It's important to have um, minority candidates and also our, we have a, a rising Hispanic population. It's important that our kids see in, in education, this frontline professional work, people that look like them and see our community growing together because those heroes are there. When uh, students, I visited my son's school and the kids said, it's Barack Obama. They said this Barack Obama because they don't see black men in our schools. That is something that we can do something about. Our city has uh, many educators, many African-Americans that have been, um, that our educators, and even if you look into Dane County right now, there's Dr. Carlton Jenkins, there's Tremaine Clarity, uh, Paris Echols, and now Terrell Yarbrough. These are all black men that have worked in Beloit. Um, it, the district has a retention problem and we know what we need to do to fix that. There's all the other things, but as a board member, what I will do is make sure that we do the work that needs to be done. Thank you so much, Sean. Uh, so Greg, I'm gonna come to you and then Christine, you'll be uh, our final uh, person on this one. All right, so Greg, please. Okay, I, I think the district has already taken some steps to do that. As Sean mentioned, they, they brought on a new program in uh, human resources where they can better track students and they can expand out of Wisconsin uh, and, and a better way to do that. The other step they've taken is to actually take one of the positions that was open in human resources and turned it into a recruiter. So they have one person whose job is, is to go out um, and to begin to recruit um, you know, minorities because we need to get our, teach, our staff and our buildings to look like the students that are there. Um, and that's real critical even for, um, to help students um, achieve academically um, as they gain um, skills, as they see uh, people like themselves that are there in the classroom and they can see it within the curriculum uh, and materials, um, they better connect with, with school and go forward with that uh, and get better test scores. Um, you know, again, it's just reach, reaching out and, and looking at resources that they haven't gone to before and having a person to do that is important. Um, retaining uh, you know, staff once they're here, I mean, that is an, another issue within the school district is retention uh, and there are a variety of reasons why that happens. Um, and teachers are, are leaving to the same, for some of the same reasons that parents are taking their students and leaving and going to through open enrollment into another area. Um, you know, getting a diverse workforce is, is critical for Beloit to move forward um, and to achieve and become the best district we can. Okay, thank you so much, Greg. And last but not least, Christine, we're coming right over to you. I think it is important to hire the most qualified people we can, regardless of how diverse the workforce is. 
which I do believe we have a diverse workforce in our district and in our community. There are hiring practices in place, I believe, that this district that has allowed this district to do a wonderful job hiring people of all walks of life that are qualified for the jobs that they do now. Our job uh, is to make sure we're hiring the best people who will help our students achieve. Okay, all right, thank you so much, Christine. All right, so folks, now I want you to just take a, take a big breath, a big breather, and we're gonna move to the second phase of questions. Okay, uh, and this uh, particular round of questions that I have uh, are categorized in four different ways. Uh, we have uh, student achievement related questions, uh, questions pertaining to the environment, uh, questions pertaining to the community and or uh, board relations. And then finally, uh, we'll have questions uh, related to uh, black indigenous and other people of color uh, relations. Okay, so those are our four categories. Um, and I have uh, at least two questions in each category. So uh, I'm going to be the one doing the selecting here. So I'm gonna start uh, just so I, I hate going in order. So I'm just gonna start with the second one that I said, environment, okay? Um, and how, how this will work um, is I will, uh, I will ask you a question um, from one of these categories and you will have two minutes to respond, okay? And then uh, if there is a, re a response or something that one of the other candidates wants to say, we have about a minute for um, our candidates to, to respond to what is said, okay? Um, so that's how, we'll, that's how we'll do this. And if time permits, we'll come back and do that all over again. Um, and so I wanna start this time uh, with the environment. And uh, Sean, I have a question that I'd like to ask you, okay? So, Here's the question. Uh, today, efforts to reduce dependence on fossil fuel-based electricity are more mainstream. Financial and logistical resources now exist that help schools improve energy efficiency and go solar. For example, uh, programs like Focus on Energy um, have helped the Fort Atkinson School District improve energy efficiency and erect uh, solar panels, which has been saving money and protecting that district from unstable utility costs. Now, that's just the background. So here's the actual question. Are you familiar with any such initiatives? And would you support or lead efforts that would enable the school district, uh, the Beloit School District to capture these benefits? So it's a, you know, it's a, a, a bit of a long wind up, but um, that is the question, and it is now in the chat uh, in case you need to refer to it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, to do what you have just described means that the Board of Education would have to have vision and set it as a priority. I am aware of school districts that have purchased electrical, electric buses, as an example. Um, though leading efforts like that is something that we can do to be progressive as we spend the dollars of the school district. Uh, as well as if we were to set a goal of having a diverse workforce and made that a priority, it would happen. Um, just, uh, I heard a comment, I have to go back to this about being most qualified candidates. Um, the same with these ideas uh, of what we can do to do green things. And we have to have the idea that we really want to have diversity. Um, we're always gonna hire people that are credentialed, but when that question comes up about African-Americans, it just, as an African-American man, that kind of rubs me. I don't like to throw around my educational accomplishments, but as an African-American, if you have an education and you have accomplishments, if you talk about them, it's too much. If you don't mention them, people question. So as we get back to what we can do with green things, that is what uh, we have to set a priority and then it can be achieved, do the research and bring the projects forward. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, Sean. Um, candidates, do we have any, uh, any response to that? Any additional, uh, whether it's a response to uh, Sean's uh, answer or your own sort of take on this? We have about a minute um, if, you're, if you're interested, anyone? Yeah, Greg, please go ahead. Okay. Um, I'm not aware of any projects within the district to go to solar energy. Um, I think it's an important way to go. We just finished putting solar panels on our on our house. Um, and there are different ways that the district can connect and to do that. 
Um, either they can purchase them all and have them installed that way, or they can go through what's called a power purchase agreement, um, where there, another company puts them up and the district agrees to buy the solar electricity from that company. Um, and again, the, the wider that goes, so if the district wants to do this, they should be connecting also with, with the city and with other organizations, because the more panels you put up, the less expensive it becomes. Um, and so that becomes important. And I agree that the district is always going to hire qualified teachers. Um, they have to be credentialed. Um, but we also have to be, make sure that we're getting the minority uh, population so that our, our teachers teaching force looks like the student population. Um, and that's critical for students to be engaged in education. All right, thank, thank you, Greg. Um, all right, so uh, I'm going to come over for our next uh, category. I'm going to go to student achievement. Um, and Christine, I'm gonna to come to you for that one, um, if that's all right. Uh, and here's one of the questions. Uh, so the pandemic revealed, among other issues, differences in who has reliable internet access. What would be your approach to ensuring every student has internet access at home? And uh, just in case that's about to be dropped into the chat right now. Um, and let's see, can you see it? All right. Okay, so that's our question. Well, I believe that obviously we want every student to be able to achieve to the best of their ability and some students may need um, extra help to be able to um, access uh, all of the resources that they may not have readily available. Uh, I would hope that considering our schools have been closed all year so far that all of our students, this has already been addressed somehow. Um, so I just, I hope that this has already been addressed and I look forward to hopefully having the students go back in person in case they don't have access to internet. All right, um, thank you. Um, all right, so we have some time. Um, any, yeah, Spencer, go ahead. Um, to kind of address this about uh, students not having internet access, the uh, school district has actually been providing hotspots to uh, some of the students. So if a family has um, kind of expressed that they have, they don't have the access to internet, um, then we can provide that to them. Something else that we have done is also expanded or updated and upgraded the uh, Wi-Fi antennas outside the schools so that kids can actually connect to them outside of the schools and be farther away um, and they can still have internet connection that way. Needed. Okay, um, thank you, Spencer. Um, any other candidate want to jump on on that one? In addition to the hotspots and the range extension of the internet, I think that's also a place for community partnerships with our business community, uh, also our houses of faith, uh, that there's, there, there could be open spaces for people to, uh, to learn. There are many, in many communities, there are houses of faith that are offering and opening learning centers. Um, to allow children to have that access. That's something that could be pursued also. All right, okay, thank you very much. Um, all right, so just in the interest of time, we'll move on to our next category and I'm gonna actually um, jump to our, uh, what we might call our BIPOC relations, Black, Indigenous and other people of color relations uh, category. And so my question there is uh, now going to come to uh, Greg, uh, and that's going to be for you. Uh, so how will the school district of Beloit School Board encourage a curriculum emphasizing more accurate portrayals of BIPOC, right? So this, um, you know, Black, Indigenous, and other people of color, uh, LGBTQ+, and other historically marginalized identities uh, in the United States. Um, and that'll be uh, in the chat here for you in just a moment. So you can take a look and we can go from there. Well, I think it's important. Um, 
that the curriculum emphasizes an accurate portrayal of history and includes all of the, the citizens of this country. Um, and it needs to be accurate. And the one way to do that is to make that an important requirement from the board and a direction and vision from the board um, so that um, as the administration or as they look at replacing curriculum or purchasing new materials, that they make sure that that is included in the materials that they get. Um, but I think it goes beyond that. It can include um, finding uh, resources now to add to the curriculum um, that would provide uh, the accurate history um, and, and be it uh, the BIPOC or, or the LGBTQ plus communities, um, just so that we become culturally aware of, of the reality of history and not what the history books have shot, told us at this point. Um, I think that becomes important both for education, but as much for the students um, so that they become engaged in what's happening within the school with they get engaged into the curriculum and move it forward. Um, and the only way we're gonna improve race relations is to, uh, so that everybody is aware of the truth. I mean, what really happened um, and so we have a better understanding of, of what life was like. Um, and that's the only way we can move forward. Okay, thank you very much, Greg. Um, candidates, uh, we have a, a minute or so. Um, anyone wanna jump in to add to that or, or in response to what Greg has said? I'll add to what Greg has said. Go ahead, Sean, please. A, a board of education to start with a strategic plan because in the strategic plan, you'll set your priorities. Uh, and then from those priorities that are set, you allow the administrative team and our teachers to go do the job that they were asked to do. Uh, a curriculum is something that's written, taught, and tested. And just in a, in, as example, when you talk about that BIPOC uh, population, it's important that our children in the learning that they do are able to find themselves, to have a vision of who they want to be, to have aspirations and stories about people like them that have achieved. And as simple as it is, teaching the history of Beloit and how this community came to be and the people around us uh, from the Native American population uh, to the African American population to our Hispanic population, teaching our own history and reflection of those around us uh, is something, is a way that that can be done uh, in a way that is not being done now. Okay, thank you so much, Sean. Um, our other candidates, anything you wanna add? Okay, all right. Um, if not, then we will pop over Spencer. It's uh, the last category is for you and this is gonna be our community and board relations category. Uh, so uh, I'm gonna ask you this question um, and this is about the Lincoln Academy. So how do you view your role uh, as a board member in regard to the Lincoln Academy? Uh, how do you recommend the district and administration address the effect this school may have on the district and our students. Um, and that question should be coming to you here uh, if you need to refer to it in just a second. So don't feel, don't feel the need to respond yet until it's there. Um, but I'm looking forward to hearing your response here. So the first thing that we kind of have to look at when we start talking about this is seeing how it directly impacts our schools. Um, so with uh, Lincoln Academy opening up, um, of course, uh, they're going to be pulling students from somewhere and it seems like it's coming more from our district. Um, but the so because of that, we have to kind of take that opportunity as Sean has already mentioned, using the strategic plan to figure out ways that we can address this. And we need to get community input to figure out ways to kind of bring families back to our schools. Um, because I know that uh, there is probably some trust issues still out there that we are still working on. And we wanna make sure that families want to come back in and they can trust their school district. So. Okay, all right, thank you, Spencer. 
Um, candidates, anyone want to respond or offer any other comments on this question? Yeah, Christine, please. So I believe that uh, as the Lincoln Academy is a reality now um, as an option for families in our city, uh, I believe it would will be important for the board to uh, seek every opportunity uh, in our community to work with any resource um, that may help our students achieve and um, just be able to work well with those who are in our community. Okay, thank you. Uh, anyone else? Uh, Sean, I see you lit up. Go All ahead. Right. Um, as a board member, we have to focus on providing an exceptional experience for our students and our families. Uh, Lincoln Academy is here, but there are other uh, local districts and other private institutions that already take about over 800 kids from Beloit already. Um, I chose to be on this team, the school district of Beloit's team, because I'm a Purple Knight. That's what we celebrate in Beloit. We are Purple Knights. We have to run the race that is before us, do our job to meet the needs of the families that we serve, and that'll stop families from leaving. We have to be a great employer to the teachers and all the employees that we have. When that story changes, when we have a different conversation about who we are in Beloit as a school district, that's when the perception will change. It doesn't matter what's been built. It's people that make a school district. And if we went on the people place, then new buildings and other things, that won't matter because people have had an experience that made them wanna be a different place than the school district of Beloit. All right, thank you, Sean. Um, anyone else before we move to the next phase here? Okay, um, so thank you all candidates for uh, this first round of questions. And so now I guess I, I, I didn't tell you, but um, I sort of asked you some of the easier questions this, this round uh, from these categories. <laughs> Sean and Greg, uh, like, bring it on, bring it on, we're ready. And Spencer's sitting there, cool. Christine, you seem like you're super relaxed. All right, this is good. Because now I'm going to ask you actually the more difficult questions from each category. Um, and Spencer, this time I'm going to start with you. Um, and I'm going to, uh, we'll go back to in our categories again. And I'm going to go to, with you to student achievement. Okay. Um, and so here's, uh, here's your question. Students have faced real difficulty learning during COVID uh, with parents and teachers alike feeling that they may not be ready to progress to the next grade level. What specific plans do you think are needed for such students? So um, we dropped that in the chat there. Um, and here we're looking for some, some sort of specific plan or action uh, to address this, at least this perception uh, that there are uh, students because of the difficulty they face that they may have some issues here. Um, from this, we can we definitely know that there, because of COVID, there has been a lot of issues that came up related to this. Um, every kid is unique, they're different. Um, some kids are enjoying even at distance learning right now, but there are kids that are still struggling uh, in this time. So one thing that we can definitely do to start helping them is uh, to kind of give some kind of an assessment, uh, allowing the teachers to kind of figure out a way to kind of gauge where that student is at that moment. And then once we figure out where that student is, and then we got to start figuring out how we can build from that spot that they're at. So we kind of, we just want to like lift them back up to where they should be. Um, we don't want to just kind of push them along. And like we talked about with social promotion, we want to uh, just kind of build and allow them to keep growing. Okay, all right, thank you. Um, any other candidates want to jump in there? Um, if you just give me a hand raise up. So uh, I see all three of you do. So we'll keep it to a minute for sure. So we'll go uh, Greg, uh, Sean and Christine, please. Okay, um, learning virtually is not always the best way to go. So this would be the opportunity for the school district to really begin to partner with other agencies and other groups in the community um, to really strengthen um, 
uh, summer school offerings or an opportunity for, I shouldn't say summer school, as we look at it as more punitive, but summer school as an activity to enhance and to improve your learning um, and get you more engaged with school um, and beginning to continue to work on them uh, during that time or give some opportunities there. Um, and then next school year, as, as Sean mentioned, it's really having to really buckle down and look at where the students are, are at that point and really begin focusing on that with, with more energy um, and more supports to, to keep moving them along. All right, um, Sean, let me come over to you and then to Christine, please. All right, I think one of the things that I would look to is like, like a philosophy of education. Frederick Douglass treated bread to learn how to read when it was illegal for black people to read. Uh, this is not the best conditions for learning uh, for our children uh, online, but we are in the middle of a pandemic. So we, so we have to focus on what got us to the situation. I'm in a school district where we have opened, but even if your school district was open, learning is not the same this year. Some students have missed 90 days because of quarantines. So this has been a disrupted year for all students. Um, it, this is a different year. We have map testing in the school district of Beloit. And one of the things I think we need to focus on is when the kids come back, we just see where they're at and then we teach. We have time. We focus, you use the time and children will get where they need to be. But you have to have a focus and a sense of calm about what we are doing. We're human beings and human beings can learn. I've been cutting my hair in the pandemic. That's why I have more hair now than I did before, but human beings can learn. John, I gotta say, I'm a little bit sensitive about the haircut thing since some of us have uh, uh, male pattern baldness, but at any rate, thank you. Uh, <laughs> Christine, we'll come right over to you, please. I think many parents have made it very clear that in-person learning is the best way for their students to learn and stay connected. And so considering that other districts have been able to find ways to bring their students in person, uh, many combined virtual with in-person, uh, I don't think we can afford to set our students back any farther for a school that already ranks so low in the state and the lowest ranking in our district or in our county. Uh, I fear many students will truly struggle trying to bounce back from this past year. And so I believe it is it should be a priority to get our schools back full time in person learning. All right, thank you. Okay, um, we're going to go over, uh, and Greg, I'm gonna come over to you for um, our next category, um, and that'll be environment. Uh, so here we are. School buildings are known to have less than ideal air circulation. Uh, the poor indoor air quality that results can impact student health, uh, potentially leading to medical expenses, absences, and illness. So. Should a school board work to identify funds to upgrade air filtration and circulation systems in district schools? So a little bit of a nuts and bolts question here. I know the district um, had facilities had just gone through and looked at all of the buildings and the, and the airflow that goes through it. Um, they took air quality measurements inside of the schools and out, directly outside of the schools. Um, and at this point, uh, the air quality within the buildings is much better than that outside of the buildings. Um, so they have looked at that at the uh, airflow already. Um, I think it's something that they, we need to stay on top of and make sure it is the best that we can do. Um, and I, that's always something that facilities is looking at um, and trying to stay ahead of. So if there's a need to improve that, um, that will come to the board right away, at which point, funds need to be allocated to, to improve the, the air handling, um, again, for the safety of everyone. Um, okay, all right, thank you, Greg. Um, any, anyone else have a comment there? Um, yeah, uh, Sean, please go ahead. So that's a, a purpose of like the CARES Act funding uh, that has gone forth a lot of to improve the quality of um, the air, there's filtration systems that districts have bought uh, as they implement the five mitigations that the CDC has given, 
I'm in a district, like I said, where we have been in school, but uh, to decide to open, there are steps that have to be taken because teachers will tell you that they can't teach if they're dead and parents are scared that their children can't learn if they're dead. Now, being where we are, uh, that we started in person uh, back in uh, September, it's a different place than where the school district of Beloit is at currently as they're getting to walk back into the buildings. But these are the things that have to be done uh, to implement the five mitigations so that it is safe to be in the buildings. I think that one thing the Beloit can be proud of is the physical plant and the conditions that we have in our buildings. Uh, that, that That's truly a jewel that our teachers and students have great facilities. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, Sean. Um, yeah, Spencer, go ahead. Um, if I remember correctly, um, they have actually, so they are actually regularly doing maintenance on the air handling units and making sure that the filters are changed out on a regular basis to ensure that the air quality is good in the buildings. Okay, thank you for that addition. Um, okay, just in the interest of time, uh, we're going to go ahead and move now. Uh, Christine, the next question is going to be yours. Um, and that's in under our community and board relations category. And so that question is this, uh, what abilities do you possess that set you apart from the other candidates and will assist you in performing as an effective board member. You can just wait until um, until we drop that in the chat. Uh, just just for uh, there you go. Just so you can refer to it. Thank you. Being a parent allows me to be especially sympathetic and familiar with the needs of other Beloit parents and their children. Having a husband who is a teacher, I am sensitive to the experiences and burdens that teachers carry. I am not intimidated by hard situations. I confidently face them head on with determination and perseverance driven by my desire to serve and support those around me. I value honesty and transparency and all these things as an informed and concerned citizen of our city, uh, I will be a voice for progress in our district and I will be a great addition to the school board. Okay, all right, thank you so much. Um, any other candidates wanna jump in there? Spencer, I saw your hand go up first and then we'll come over to Sean, please. So uh, one of the things that really kind of uh, helps me out is I'm still relatively close to the age group um, for at least high school. So um, I'm just, I just got out of like the high school area or high school. So I still understand the things that go on there. Um, I also going back into those schools, it gives me a different perspective too. Um, and I always, do I, I always have a high attention to detail. Um, I always come prepared to the board meetings, um, making sure that I go through everything and make and just make sure that I'm prepared in general. Um, and one thing I know, I don't talk very much in the board meetings, but I'd rather be a listener and take in all the information that people have to say. And then when I do have to speak, it's something meaningful instead of uh, just trying to add to a conversation. Okay, thank you, Spencer. Um, so Sean, we'll come over to you and then to Greg, please. Um, I'm a parent and I'm a community member. I am from Beloit. Uh, I think that um, I represent some of the things that we are trying to have our children do and be. I've seen so many of my own peers in Beloit go on to do uh, great things. And that's why I'm serving, because our community needs us. Um, I have technical training to be a district administrator, a director of instruction, a principal, a teacher. I've been a coach. I know those roles in our district. As a board member, it's not my job to reach across the line of implementation or execution to do those jobs, but to, sort, but to support those people in doing that job. Uh, I'm a basketball coach at the YMCA, so I know the children of Beloit. I've coached my son and daughter who are um, uh, 10 and 12. And I know these ch children, I see them at church, I see them in the barbershop, I see them at Walmart. Um, 
I represent service and helping our team, our district administrator, our board of education, and our teachers and our, and our staff. I'm on the Beloit team. All right, thank you, Sean. And then Greg, finally, thank you. Hey, uh, you know, with 40 years of experience at a variety of different levels, all the way from a teacher through middle uh, management, if you want to call it that, up to this the central office, I have a lot of different experience. Um, and can share all of that with the board. Um, I have worked in several different school districts, all of them very different. Uh, the one just before Beloit was in North Carolina, which is similar makeup to Beloit, but much, much larger. Um, and so I've worked with a lot of parent groups, a lot of agencies and organizations, and a lot of uh, the business owners and professionals. And so I've spent a lot of time working within community groups. Um, and so have that experience to bring forth uh, into the board and so to work with the community as a whole. All right, thank you, Greg. Okay, so uh, the final question that I have here um, is this will be for, for you, Sean. Um, and this is under our BIPOC relations uh, category. And that is this, how will you work to actively address the perceived racism that exists not only in the district schools, but also on this current board? Well, I think that uh, to, to give perspective to that, like I said, I'm from Beloit. Uh, you have to be comfortable in your own skin and mine is black. Uh, I know who I am. Uh, my parents taught me my community and I've learned different things about Beloit. Uh, we can represent progress and hope, uh, but then there are some things that need to be addressed. As a board member, when I hear things that I think don't sound right, at least to me, I'm going to say something about it. Um, and also from the policy point of view, we will hold people accountable and we'll put policy in place that will not allow that to happen. Uh, you don't run for a seat to just sit and rubber stamp and let things happen that you know are not correct. Um, as an example, I've worked in Columbus, Ohio, I've worked in Beloit, I work in a predominantly white district about an hour away. And even when it comes to expulsion of students, the way we handle discipline there and the way I see the pupil control ideation, ideology, the control, the decision about how do we handle our children is different. In schools, we have to be nurturing, we have to have order and not chaos, because you can't learn in chaos. But our attitude and towards discipline is often reflective of our attitudes about black brown children, about poor white children, about white children with IEPs. Uh, I represent and stand for everyone and I'll make sure that justice is done so that our children can learn. No matter where they're at or who they are, you have someone who will stand up for children. Okay, thank you, Sean. Um... Other candidates, uh, anyone want to weigh in on this question? Okay, uh, Spencer, please go ahead. Um, so one thing that we can do is uh, first off, expanding our committees, um, bringing more citizens from our community in, um, because then the the community will actually have a kind of a say and also. Um, Okay, I don't read. Um, so then the community has more input on this and um, help to kind of correct things that aren't perceived to be right. Um, we also uh, want to bring up more diverse options to the table. Um, looking at other communities uh, in the surrounding area to help bring in best practices. Okay. All right, thank you, Spencer. And um, Sean, I mean, if, if no one else, let me see if any of the other uh, candidates uh, have a response here. If not, um, I will come over to you uh, to give you a minute to, to add on if necessary. Go ahead. Uh, I just wanted to add to that. The most serious thing and consequential decision that a Board of Education makes is when they decide to expel a student. Um, in our training, they'll tell you that as an administrator that expulsion is not good for any student but for the students that you do decide to expel, it's because their behavior is such so egregious that it's violated your policies 
and made learning a uh, disruptive learning process for others. Our Board of Education outsources the handling and decision making of expulsion hearings, and then they'll go back and review what the hearing officer does. The district I work in, the Board of Education sits on those uh, meetings. We have responsibility to provide children a free and appropriate public education. And that's one thing that the board could decide to do is to actually hear the expulsions, to understand the discipline situations that are coming to uh, the board and understand the conditions in the building, the practices, that how do these children get here? How is it that these students with IEPs end up at the expulsion table? How is it that in disproportionate numbers, black and brown students get here? Those are attitudes that have to be examined along with that race question that you asked earlier. And that's something that the board can directly choose to do. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, Sean. Um, all right, so candidates, um, that is, we've reached the end of the questions that I had prepared for you. Um, and I do want to uh, share with everyone that these questions came from the community. So these are not, um, these are not my questions per se. Um, in fact, they are not my questions. <laughs> Uh, these came from the community. So um, now we have reached uh, the, the sort of end of, of what we're doing here this evening. And so I'd like to hear some closing remarks. Again, you know, you'll have just a couple of minutes, but um, some brief closing remarks from each one of our, uh, our candidates. Uh, so I'd like to begin, Greg, with you. Um, we'll go Greg, uh, Christine, uh, Sean, and Spencer, please. You've all heard our ideas and goals for the school district and what our thoughts are. The role of the school board is to guide the district with its vision for the future and a strategic plan. The superintendent then leads the district and the administration to fulfill that vision within the schools. Um, and so the board is not involved in the day-to-day -day operation, but the important thing is they are the vision. They are the ones at the top that begin to direct the way the district goes. Um, and it is important to have a cohesive board, not one, one that can openly discuss differing opinions and values and ideas so that as a group, we can make a best decision possible and move the district forward. Um, however, you know, the board and the district cannot do it alone working together with the parents, the community, teachers, staff, administration, and the board, we can make Beloit one of the best school districts in the state. Um, you know, there's a lot of different areas that we need to work on and we need help with that and community support would make that work and bring in a lot more diversity and a lot more ideas. You know, I will bring my passion, my experience and leadership to the school board you know, so that we can build better schools, because the better the students that we that come out of our school system, the better all of our futures will be. You know, again, I would like to thank the, the League of Women Voters, the NAACP, the Chamber, and, and the WHPCA for their um, effort to put forward this uh, forum this evening uh, to let us share our ideas with the community. So thank you. All right. Thank you so much, Greg. All right, uh, Christine, we'll come to you, please. For any closing remarks? I'm excited to serve families, my community, and all involved with the school district of Beloit as we work towards progress in our school district. This will happen by keeping these three priorities our focus. Achievement for our students, accountability to the taxpayer, and providing a safe, learning environment so that all of our students and staff can achieve the greatness that this community deserves. Our children's futures are in our hands. Please vote for me, Christine Raleigh, on April 6th. Thank you. All right, thank you, Christine. And Sean, we'll come over to you, please. Um, and tonight, through the questions, I've tried to share my vision for Beloit. I've tried to explain uh, the ways that I think I can provide leadership on the Board of Education to help. Vision and leadership, two things that I think that um, we have been lacking in Beloit. I believe that we are more than our test scores. We're more than our school report card. Uh, you have to have a vision and some leadership to be more than what people say you are. Um, you have to believe that these children, that these families in Beloit can be 
and will be something. Uh, in church, there's the pastor gives a sermon. Can any good thing come out of Nazareth? Beloit has been like Nazareth, said that we are too small, too tiny, that we don't have enough. But Beloit is great and great people come from Beloit. And we have to have a vision uh, that we work together as a community to make sure that that story continues to be told about the people that come from Beloit. I'm asking for your vote so that we can continue to tell the story and make good things happen from Beloit for our families and for our children. Thank you so much, Sean. And last but certainly not least, Spencer, please. So I just wanna take another opportunity to say thank you again for the NAACP, the League of Women Voters and the Beloit Chamber of Commerce and the Wisconsin Health Professionals of Climate Action for hosting this event. Um, I'd also like to thank you, Ron Watson, for uh, moderating tonight. It was very nice. Uh, great first experience in a forum. Um, but um, I hope that uh, I earn some of your guys' votes uh, coming up on April 6th. And I just want to again say that I believe I can bring or help bring more stability to the district um, and keep moving the district in the right direction, uh, which I feel that we are on that track right now. Um, and to kind of add to that, um, there is, I've, it's kind of like a bragging moment for me, but I've had um, so far about, well, earned about 20 endorsements from local elected officials so that uh, they believe that I can do that for you guys. So uh, once again, I want to say thank you and hopefully I earned your guys' vote on April 6th. Okay, thank you, Spencer. All right, everyone, we have reached the end uh, of this candidate forum. Um, it's been a, an absolute pleasure getting to know each of you tonight. Uh, most of you I hadn't had the opportunity to meet. And so this is, uh, even in a virtual format, it's been great to, to see your faces and hear what you have to say with respect to this district that we all love so much. Um, I myself have two children in the district um, and having come from a, a different city uh, many years ago now, I can tell you that, that we may not know what we have here, but what we have here is extraordinarily special. Um, and it's something worth building upon um, and worth recognizing as we all go out into the world and talk about this amazing city called Beloit. So um, I wanna thank you all. I also want to remind you again, April 6th, um, that's when you will cast your votes. Um, and I wanna thank you for allowing me to be here in this forum. Uh, again, my name is Ron Watson. I'm an associate professor of political science and health and society, uh, which is our public health program at Beloit. Um, if you have young people who are interested in Beloit, please do send them my way. Um, I'm happy to talk to them. Uh, if you have other questions for the candidates, uh, and if it's not showing up in the chat because you joined a little bit late, uh, if we can, is it possible for us to drop that uh, info once again uh, into, the, into the chat if we can at the very end? Uh, but all of our candidates do have contact information uh, and, are, uh, and I assume are happy to hear any questions from any of you. Uh, so with that being said, uh, thank you. And I will uh, give things over to Maggie to sort of round us out before we leave. But thank you all very much. Maggie, you're on mute. Thanks, Ron. I was saying just a virtual round of applause to you for being a wonderful moderator and also to Joyce and Tia for your hard work in um, helping put this event together. There was a lot of um, behind the scenes work that it takes to especially run a virtual event too. Um, this has been our now second virtual candidate forum. So um, I think we've all learned a lot, but we um, wanted to, I especially wanted to give a shout out to um, Ron and Joyce and Tia for making this possible. And then of course our candidates and everybody else for joining us this evening. 
um, is, uh, and I echo everything that Ron has mentioned as well in his closing remarks. Um, I just want to do a friendly reminder for everybody that if you maybe came in late, we will send the recording and um, the, co the candidate's contact information via email tomorrow. And um, we're happy to put that up on the Chamber website. We are one of the largest business connectors for our region. So if you or um, a, a business friend that you have um, is just looking to network, expand their brand, get more brand exposure, um, we would invite the opportunity to have that discussion and talk to them about the chamber. Um, and with that, um, just so everybody is aware, you are able to save the chat um, if you wanted to collect the questions or the candidates information that way. There's uh, three little um, three little dots at the bottom of your chat and there's an option to save it. But um, with that, I will let everybody get on with their evening and thank you so much for joining us and have a great rest of your night. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.